The search for alien life is really the search for the right conditions. Part of that is controlled by temperature, the distance a planet is from its star. Every star has a Goldilocks zone, an area where it's not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Astronomers call this the habitable zone. I'm Summer Ash, and I'm an astrophysicist obsessed with space, because space is awesome. The habitable zone for a given planetary system is the distance from a star where the surface temperature on a planet can be somewhere between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius, the range where liquid water can exist. Life as we know it needs water, so no water, no life. In our solar system, Earth is in the habitable zone for our sun, or we wouldn't be having this conversation. Venus is too close and therefore too hot. Mars is too far from the sun and therefore too cold. However, the habitable zone for our solar system is prescribed by our star, the sun, which is a yellow dwarf star. Change the star and the zone changes too. The star at the center of the recently discovered TRAPPIST-1 system is much smaller and cooler than our sun. It's a red dwarf, which means that the habitable zone for that system is much closer into the star. How much closer? Well, all seven TRAPPIST planets orbit their star closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. And the habitable zone is a fraction of that. But there's a catch. Habitable zones aren't fixed. They change with time because stars change with time. As most stars get older, they expand. And consequently, habitable zones move farther out. As our Sun ages, it will puff up and transform into a red giant, pushing the habitable zone past Mars, possibly even all the way to Saturn, leaving Earth a hot mess, literally. In the search for life, habitable zones play an important role, but they aren't the only factor at work. The composition of a planet matters too. We find gas giant planets like Jupiter in the habitable zones of stars all the time, but they would never be able to support life. And on the flip side, rocky planets too far away from their stars could be habitable after all, if they had the right atmospheres. And another thing, rotation speed matters. Earth rotates once every 24 hours, allowing the heat of the sun to be evenly distributed. A planet in the habitable zone that is tidally locked to its star would mean only one side gets the light. So one side would be too hot and the other side would be too cold. Goldilocks would not approve. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.